Okay, right. I am gonna I'm gonna jump off. His he has a name. I mean I guess I can be on. Hi guys. <laughs> We're delighted <laughs> to see you. <laughs> Is this going out then? Okay, I'm right. I'm gonna I'm gonna now. jump off. His yeah. he has a name. Yeah. I mean I guess I can be on. Yeah. Sure. Hi guys. <laughs> Hello Hi, everyone. We're delighted to <laughs> see is, you. This is Harvey. Uh, is this Michael, going out then? Michael, okay, before right, checking, this, this is on the off. the original name. Zoom. I, mean, yeah. I guess I can be on. Yeah. yeah sure. This is on your. Hello. Hey, everyone. We're delighted to <laughs> see is, you. This is Harvey. I'm going uh, to. I'm going to go back into chat. I, Michael, I'm okay. Sure. I, I mean, this is on the the original Zoom. I mean, I guess I can be on. Yeah. This is on your. Oh man. Oh, I'm going uh, to go back into chat. I, Michael, I'm okay. Sure. I, I mean, this is on the, the original Zoom. I, mean, I guess I can be on. Yeah. I, I, this I, is on your. Oh, man. Oh, I'm going uh, to go back into chat. I, Michael, I'm okay. Sure. I, I, I mean, I'm this is on the, the original Zoom. I, mean, I guess I can be on. Yeah. I, I, this I, is on your. Oh, man. Okay, I think I turned off what I'm hearing from uh, YouTube. And I, we've been going through a cycle. Are you there, John? I am here, but let's see if we can start the show again. And I'm still getting YouTube cycling. All right, let's see if we can start it. I'm getting weird stuff in my ear, so I'm going to take out my... And we're just going to start all over again. And so here we go. Welcome. I am not Michael. I am John. And I think we're looking at the other John who's in Monterey. Not yet, but I'm here, John. Here together. Hi, Hi John. John. And I, I like your lower third that works for both of us, but uh, I'm not sure you switched to me. Uh, so we'll have to see what happened there. There I go. Now I'm switched. Okay. And now you went out of focus for a moment. But anyway, John, thanks for the introduction. And neither of us are Michael. And we're here today. We're sort of sitting in for Michael and had a little uh, hiccups, but this is new. But we're early adopters and followers of the QCAM presenter growth. And with John being, with Michael being busy, having a new son, the two Johns and are going to be here talking about, well, John, you're going to talk some experimentation you've been doing with uh, QCAM Presenter. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do better uh, communications using tools like this, sort of from the historical look and what's happening now, what's in the future. So, John, you went out into the field recently doing some experimentation. Do you want to share that? Sure, I'd be happy to. And uh, my, my, I'm jumping in to what we call a slideshow, but it's not a slideshow, it's a video show. And it's only been recently when I've noted we can easily take video with our camera that we're carrying with us, have a mic into it, put it into a sequence, and then play it. And that's what I did recently when I was visiting Carmel. And so I'll play that with you. Now using the DJI mic and the Blackmagic app on extreme stabilization. 
I'm using the Blackmagic camera app, but the audio system comes through this lavalier, and in my pocket, I have this simple transmitter from DJI. It's the Mic 2, and it's running Bluetooth. And that Bluetooth signal is picked up by the camera directly. So I've got framing, I've got levels. What's not to like? This is a report of the damages caused by the recent rains that have been stopped for two days. And it's gorgeous now, but oh my. I am not an insurance adjuster. This is just a walk around. That is Monastery Beach where the waves are breaking and going out to Point Lobos, one of the most spectacular views you'll ever find. The sign says the beach is closed. Might want to tell it to these people. And I think what strikes me about that whole process is how easy it is to flow from one scene to the next. You have your, I could be an insurance adjuster, I could be a sales guy, I could be a mechanic. I could now document what I do and what I see. And when I communicate that immediately, like here, or in a meeting with my colleagues, I can do that almost instantly. It might take a couple hours, but so much less than preparing a presentation and then asking for permission to share. And what I can see in the future is everyone being able to do this, to share their perspectives and their experiences in a wider way, a wider bandwidth way than just using their words or writing their documents. And John, you've been working at this field for a very long time, and it's just so refreshing to get your viewpoints about how this has changed. And this people have been working on this for a long time. Well, uh, John, you've also been in, in this space doing publications and, and the like. But it's, it's fun to see what you did there is because the workflow that I enjoy is, you know, you went out and you did your field production, did it on your iPhone, your resources were automatically saved, and then you were able to put it together in a sequence uh, and using QCAM Presenter to order the, the, the stack of cards and then play it for us. So I think that's uh, what's what's interesting is we, we talk about a tool, but the tool is an overall workflow. You decide what you're going to you know go out and do your field production, gather your assets, then you come back in, you put them together. And I think that's what uh, I find being very interesting now is that back in the early days, you know, I go back to the you know 1990s and 1920, to do what you did would have taken a lot of different pieces of hardware and a lot of different software programs for pre-production editing. And then you would have had to piece it all together, whether you were doing a Final Cut Pro or Premiere premier video editing and you may have been shooting on a dv camera and then you had to import that video and or maybe even convert it so that it would actually stream because of the bandwidth constraints and literally now your tools in your pocket let you get your field production and you came and it, on your mac laptop everything the resources you were needed were there and you use qcam to pull them in and then bring in your live discussion about it. So it's the workflow changes I'm seeing now. And it's interesting because you and I have been, been playing with this. We have different approaches to how we start learning about this software. I, I give the approach you have is the run until you're tackled. <laughs> you decide you want to try something and you pound at it until it works. Um, you know, I, my thing is I usually take a previous program or previous thing that I did and see how I would use the new tool and then how does the new tool give me more options and how I present things. But uh, John, what 
what is your sort of uh, take on what you've learned in the last couple of weeks as the uh, some of the newer features have come out in version 1.0? Well, from my standpoint, Michael is a unique individual contributor who has listened to people for what they want and what has evolved into what we now have came first from you know creating your uh, a webcam out of your iphone that was shoot and then how do i telestrate over a picture that was video pencil and now this toolkit forms a little ecosystem of these applications that lash together into a system where you can bring in cameras and overlays and text and graphics as we demonstrated and it's all on your desktop and you're able to then share it with whatever ecamm obs zoom meet whatever kind of distribution method or record it into a file and Why don't you uh, pull up in demo mode and show the, the deck that you use to make that little presentation? Sure, I can do that. Let me go here. This is what I created. And what's interesting to me about this is not only could I just drag these video clips from my desktop into a card which is here i can actually play that card and i hear it you don't but i can preview it and then i can say you know what i want to trim this this isn't exactly right and you can see that i actually had trimmed this a little bit and you can trim and change it listen to it get it so that it's what you want and then you can decide do I want to loop it? Do I want to have it stop? Do I want to move to the next card automatically? I mean, those little thoughts are things that are deep inside of this tool set all the way from the beginning to the end. And it's because there's a human being in the middle of it. And yeah, whole... it, I think, the again, the workflow aspect of that, because back in the old days when I would be using QuickTime, I might have to go to QuickTime, trim it, and then save that file. And then if I wanted to import it, then I would have to, you know, re-import it where it's nice when it's literally, you could do the trimming right when you're in one piece of software. Um, so if you go back to that demo view, I was going to ask you one other question about some of the things that you did. Absolutely. Go for it. Well, your lower thirds that you popped in those. Now, how did you create all of those? So each card, the concept is each card has a number of attributes and they're all up here. And this one is showing the, uh, see, I'm, I'm using video pencil now to be able to highlight and gather, gets people to view those. That card, I can put in graphics or I can put in and I can select a graphic and stick it in. I'm going to just be ugly here. And, oh, it didn't go. Anyway, it's a video. So I can put in, in the slide, I can put in text, graphics, take things away. It changes automatically, reformats itself. So instead of fine tuning all these pieces, you can very quickly put together the vi various elements of sharing screens, sharing second cameras. So adding cameras is not a problem at all. Uh, you can add music as we did at the beginning of the show and these triggers. These triggers are amazing. Any URL it can call. And so you can bring in a web page. You can fire up a different app you can have it switch cameras because underneath all this is a network layer everything's available through tcp ip and urls and so i can call a camera with certain settings i can set up osc commands if i have very sophisticated uh, tools uh, so the rely the the depth of the tool 
is striking. Does that answer your question? No, it answers my question, but it, it I don't know whether you had that question that uh, we talked about uh, before the show the from an individual who was uh, sent in, uh, I believe this was on the uh, the Discord chat where somebody was asking the question of, you know, what, what does it take to uh, learn how to do the things that you're doing? Yeah, how many hours do I need to invest in the learning QCAM? Um, and I thought that was a great question that, that Dennis asked there because uh, you and I talked about the different ways that we go about trying to decide, you know, how we're going to learn a new program. What, what's that story about how many hours you need before you're an expert? Absolutely. You need 10,000 hours. And how many hours do I need to invest in learning QCAM is a very good question. And well, I, before, I don't think you need 10,000 hours to really start getting the benefit of it. Um, no. And but, uh, I, I keep thinking that it's like learning to play the piano. You're going to start with Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And then you're going to develop as you find it appealing to move forward. And then there's some rigor that can be attached from an expert who teaches you and the balance between your own explorations and their guidance gets you to progress. And so why don't you drop the graphic, John? I like to see your eyes while you're doing it. <laughs> easily. I'm, I'm back at you. And the, the what's interesting with you, John, is that you're excellent at let's lay out the outline. Let's go through the steps. Let's what did we learn? Let's reflect on what we just did. OK, now what's our plan for next time? That whole process is something that integrated with a tool like this, it becomes a natural part of progression. And people learn by having a tool at their disposal and the ability to share it back and forth. And you and I just had a great experience with Michael um, the other day where we were actually live and Michael was in his code showing us what he was doing and particularly we were creating a graphic together we were creating an email together both of us were on qcam and we could go back and forth and he'd say oh we need words right here and i could go into that same web page change it same dashboard he'd see the change he'd go into figma into the graphics change it around i'd oh i have a picture of that i'd put it into figma he'd take that picture manipulate it we got so much done in how much time did that take yeah it, it's interesting that was really the first experience even though you and i have been testing beta things and working with michael but this was really the first time we actually used QCAM presenter as our common canvas for collaborative work at the same time. Um, and uh, in the chat, it's interesting here that uh, Cyprian, a good friend from British Columbia, we were saying that there's a, there's a counter to the point to the 10,000 hours. And Michael Forrest said, uh, I think the correct answer would be a couple days, I hope. Uh, I'll have to say that when I first got it, uh, it was so intuitive that I was up and running, but it was it was like opening presents at a birthday party. <laughs> you, know, you would find. So I wanted I want to put a lower third, and I and I figured out how to do that. And actually, well, I want to center it. Well, I want to put a graphic on it. So it was a, a very easy user interface to to get it going. But I think when we use it as a collaborative workspace, that was a a, a really fun and eye opening experience. Um, you use this at your meetings with the Rotary, correct? Yeah. In fact, that's how I got started. I mean, I've done PowerPoint forever. And when uh, COVID hit, I was the guy in the back of the room, you know, making sure that the laptop running PowerPoint for Rotary meetings worked. And the president said, will you be our Zoom driver? And I said, sure, why not? And that started it. And so I, the, the bell went off and we were online for a year 
only, but then we we're going to have to go back into our venue, our meeting, and not everybody was going to come back. Some people have moved away. Some people have passed on. Some people just didn't want to join a bunch of other people. And so we would have to have cameras in the room. And that's where we went into a process of let's bring in some experts. And they came in and here's your ATEM switchers. Here's your Panasonic PTZ cameras. You know, we already had a sound system. You know, we had to learn, you know, the whole process of building a show, but we recorded it in Zoom. And by having that Zoom account and then getting it into HD and doing all those things, um, it got me to a place where suddenly I was comfortable recording things and taking the recordings down, trimming them up a little bit, putting them up on YouTube in an archive. And that archive is still persistent. We have hundreds of meetings now. And that's the point at which I ran into, you know, let's look at office hours. Well, they know what they're doing. Who do you listen to? You know, Alex Lindsay, those people. And one of the people was John Idelson that here he was in Monterey, that's close by. Hmm, what if I send him a little note? And John came back with, oh, you're the Rotary Club. You guys are all over the world. Do you realize what you could do? So that started it. And <laughs> well, it was, it was fun, John. You and, you and I are people who met through the Office Hours community. It's interesting here that... Um, uh, Michael talked about, you know, how long does it take to learn the tool? And he says, easy to learn, but a lifetime to master. Uh, obviously, this is our first run of us running the show. So we're learning. It's going to be a while before we master it. But when I was teaching classes at the university and, and the students, you know, I, I would start with them saying, you know, I'm here and this class is where you'll be teaching me how to use the software. And they said, no, isn't that the other way around? Aren't you supposed to be teaching us? I said, well, I'll share with you what I know and I'll share with you best practices, but I learn much more from people who are using it. I think of the early days of um, Photoshop, I'm sure the engineers had a great idea how they would use this for image manipulation, but it wasn't until photographers started playing with it that it became the tool for creativity, artists, and what it's become now, and who knows what it'll be with the next generations with AI. And I think the same thing here, we're just at the ground floor of figuring out how this tool, which integrates so many of the processes that were different applications, e even in the garden of Apple ecosystem, you still had your video editor, you still had your text editor, you still had your uh, photo library. And you could move between them very easily. But now literally I have this interface where I could get any of those, I could drop them into a presentation, I could modify them, I could shift the order that I do it. I'm not sure how that will change what we do. It isn't until we start trying to figure out what message we're trying to communicate and any tool that makes it more transparent on how to manipulate, manipulate, I can't even say it, my resources is going to change our workflow and it's going to reduce the cognitive stress on figuring out how to do it to figuring out what I want to say and what's the best way of doing it. And I think that's the exciting thing that I've seen as you and I have been on this journal, journey of discovery of, you know, which started with, well, we've got shoot for the camera, we've got video pencil for annotation over graphics. And now we have a thing called beat sheets, which was an organization tool and we smushed them all together. And now we have something that grows on all that, but something new that's become a very powerful tool for us to create better messages. Yeah. In fact, I've got a little bit of your history here in front of me. And if you would like, I can play it. And this well, is... we should probably set this up. Uh, yeah. It, when you and I were, and I know, John, you're, you're going to need to run, but we, we could do this and then we'll continue it. This will be the teaser. So let me set it up. We'll play a couple, uh, uh, maybe a minute of it. And then if uh, Michael lets the two amateur Johns come back on his show, we could uh, explore it further. 
but I pulled went went back into my archive and back in 2009 I was at the Apple Distinguished Educator Institute and we were a team of people who were going to create went back into my archive and back in 2009 somehow you got me coming back here John Educator Institute and we were this may not work John Oh really I didn't start playing it I was no, just but it, setting up. I'll, I'll set up. No, that you 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 brought YouTube back into us. Okay. So uh, so well, we we may have to save this for the the next show. Oh well, I I didn't start it. Do you want to play it now? I'm happy to play it. Um, let's see if. Well, I'm trying to set up. Let me set up, and then we'll see if it plays. Yeah. Okay. But this was a uh, a group of educators who were talking about multimedia and we weren't talking only about you know how to use multimedia for teachers to present very much like how do we use QCAM to make presentations we were saying that we should give tools to our students for them to create their own presentations you really learn about something by teaching something so this was a video in 2009 of what it might be like for giving the power to students Okay, let's let it rip. Hello, I'm John Idelson. And I'm V. Cantor. How do we maximize opportunities for personalized learning today? We live in an era of personalization. We make everything our own. Making content our own is at the heart of personalized learning. Personalized learning does not mean teachers personalizing content for the students. It means students taking the content and making it their own. It's not about us, it's about them. But those early pioneers certainly had the right idea. Traditional uses of video in teaching and learning are not personalized. It begins with the idea of an inertial reference frame. An hour-long lecture is hard to watch and does not engage the students. It doesn't make it their own. Showing a lengthy video isn't any more engaging. Projecting a documentary on Friday afternoon does not let students pause, rewind, or reflect. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, we just need to make it roll better. There's a wealth of educational content out there just waiting for students to personalize it. Students engage with the content as they make it their own. When students interact with video, they watch, interpret, reflect, and present content. They give us an answer that is not just an A, B, C, or D. They give us their own understanding in a very personal way. They make the message meaningful for themselves. Once upon a time, remixing video was difficult and expensive. Now, we have the tools in our pockets. And now I'm going to be talking... Okay, John, let's stop it here and that see if we can get back to me. me. Exactly. But that's so, just a brilliant step into the past. Look at all those tools you had. Well, I looked at how much younger I looked. But I, I think the, the interesting thing about that is... Um, at, at that time, we had a crew of five. We went to a green screen stage to create the intro. When we talked about the tools in your hands, it was a little either flip camera or a DV camera. We had separate audio cameras. We were doing still photos with uh, DSLRs, and we were putting all those resources together. We were editing the audio in Audacity. We were any, editing a video in, in Final Cut Pro, and this was a challenge. They It was to see how quickly we could do something. So it took us two days for that team to create that three-minute video. And so one of the ways that I learn about a new program is I take an old program and figure out how I would produce it with the new tools. And then once I've replicated it, then I'd go, well, what enhancements or how would I do it differently? And I started playing with this and that little clip, which had us walking up there and then adding this all together, I realized that I could have done on my own. I would need to get my shy, sidekick uh, B to get into the sh shot, but I could have done the green screen literally within the phone. Uh, it probably would have taken us about three hours to do what took us five people, two days to produce that. And I think that's, you know, the, the power of how technology has improved, how what used to be, it, it, you 
have an expensive camera. Uh, iPhone is still expensive, but you have an incredible camera in your iPhone. So it, it might be fun, John, for us to do a little lab where we take that 2009 event and figure how we would update it and how the production of it would be done today using QCAM Presenter versus the tools that we use there, which was Final Cut Pro, uh, various imaging manipulation software, audio editing, video editing, green screen production. Um, and maybe if we do that, I'll I'll go back in age. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> it would be fun. You, you, you look just fine now. And the, the reality is that we've all had this saga going on for years. And it's, it's funny that it now seems to be in a place where mere mortals can actually do these things. You used to have, not only did you have all these different tools, but you needed expertise in each of those areas. And now these tools can be done by individuals. And yes, we have to stumble a few times. Yes, we have to, you know, request new features, let's say, based on our experience or whatnot. But the reality is, this is just the beginning. And all I can say is that this has been an amazing journey in the last really little more than a year that we've been interacting well, with you, John, a little bit longer, but with Michael. And, you know, where it goes, we're going to find out together. Who knows? But, uh, John, it's been a pleasure. Our first venture with the John and John show was uh, a little rough sailing, but I, I think we survived it. And uh, definitely uh, want to congratulate Michael as a new father. And, you know, getting launching software, you know, is like giving birth to a, a project. But no, Michael's got a real software hardware project that he's going to be dealing with for many, many years. But uh, I was glad that you and I were able to take this time and talk about QCAM Presenter to answer some questions from the people in the Zoom room. And if... Uh, if Michael isn't too uh, upset with how we did it, they may see us again, and we'll do that uh, rebuild of the move 2009 to 2024. So other than that, John, I just want to thank you for hosting this and inviting me to chat with you. Uh, and from my standpoint, I couldn't do it without you, John. It's wonderful that we can team up. And uh, with Michael in the wings, I feel like we can do anything. So... What I want to do is say there are other people around that have been part of this as well. And we just want to end this with thank you. stream i need to find that little spot john in zoom and i don't see it well we might just need to end the meeting but we could come back to this when it's not streaming that sounds great